What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final, final little pass is a business. Dead Meat. Hey, welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. And I'm Chelsea, and we're a boyfriend and girlfriend, and we like to get scared together. Yeah, we do. So a few things first, just housekeeping will be really quick. We're doing video now with the podcast. We're going to be hosting the podcast every Tuesday on Dead Meat. So yeah, next week, Actually, there's going to be one that doesn't have a video component because we recorded it before we realized we wanted to do video with all these. But it's a review of Maximum Overdrive, which I'm very excited about. We had a lot of fun recording it. So, a lot of fun. Yeah. So we'll still host the audio on YouTube, but it'll be like a still image over the whole thing. But from then on, every podcast is going to have a video. But that won't change the audio component of uh, the podcast. If you are a podcast person and you enjoyed getting your podcast from us and listening to it on whatever podcast app you use, you can continue to do that unfettered. It'll be the exact same, only now it'll also live on the channel with a video component moving forward. Yes. Yes. Second thing, we have Final Girl shirts in the store now. Ah, <laughs> I don't know how much... It- Hopefully you can see it. Yeah, it's really cool. It's the uh, same design as the the pin. So you can pay tribute to the queen of horror academia, Carol Clover, who coined the term final girl in this book that I have on my desk. Yep. I read that whole book. Men, Women, and Chainsaws. It's actually in the essay. Is it his, uh, her body himself, I think is where the final okay. girl comes from. Yeah. She talks a lot about Texas Chainsaw Massacre and movies like that where you have the final girl left at the end. So you can thank Carol Clover for that trope that's often like pointed out when horror gets meta. Yeah. That's like, a very academic book. Yes. Pretty dry. Very dry. But, <laughs> but I would say if you're looking to get into the more academic side of horror, this is like the essential reading. Yeah. But maybe not the entry no because it's dry also a little out of date now because that was early 90s uh yeah it's a little old but definitely uh it doesn't touch on any of the crazy shit that's happened since then in the genre Mm -hmm. but that's okay that's what we're here for and other people who are smarter than us but also us yes (laughs) (laughs) what are we doing today chelsea today we're gonna play a game that i'm very excited about we're gonna play would you rather horror themed would you rather obviously we got a ton of submissions for this it was actually really overwhelming to go through so if we didn't pick yours it's nothing personal we just had a ton of them yeah and i went and picked the ones that i think made me struggle the most i kind of sat and thought about them for a little bit i thought they were genuinely difficult decisions to make cool yeah that's fun so i love making difficult decisions mm -hmm. so i i wrote some myself and, uh, I have one. You I have one. I came up with one. Very I found good. the time to to think up one in between my editing. Good job. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Uh, in case, in case for whatever reason, someone listening to this isn't familiar with the conceit of the game, how would you explain it? All it is is I'm going to pitch a scenario and ask you: Would you rather do this thing or this thing? Chelsea, will we be having questions of: Would you rather get killed by Jason or by Freddy? No, <laughs> I I picked ones that were a bit more complicated than that. Okay. You know, ones that really make me think people who really put a creative spin, um, you know, what I was asking for. Not that, you know, we got any ones that were dumb. Everyone worked very hard and submitted really cool would you rathers. But I had a I had a specific theme I was going for, maybe. Well, so. well but maybe before we get start, would you rather get killed by Jason or Freddie? Freddy. Really? Yeah. Why? Because he's fun. and he... It's fun for him. I don't know how fun it is. I just think Freddy Krueger's sexy. <laughs> God damn it, Chelsea. <laughs> so I think that's why I would pick him. Oh, I would pick Jason because it'd be probably a lot quicker. That's true. Freddy toys with his victims. Jason usually just like... Because the thing I have in mind is from part six, Jason Lives, when Jason literally drops out of nowhere in front of three people and swipes off their heads with a single stroke. So... But that then sounds... some of the kills in that game are very slow. Eh, it's all over within like 20 seconds. <sighs> Remember how long, long Freddy time. was fucking with that roach chick? She was a roach for like, I don't know. Yeah. Good 15 but minutes. But you're a roach. That's kind of weird. 
<laughs> and fun. <laughs> sure. All right. Yeah. All right. I guess I'll get us started. Yeah, get us started okay. with, the, with the questions proper. Oh, let's see here. Also, hey, everyone. Thanks for, for listening because we're having a good time with this podcast. It's a really fun project. I love doing the podcast. It's so fun. Yeah. Okay, so I do have a couple on here, at least one where it's not even a would you rather, but it was kind of a scenario that made me think and I think would be fun to debate. I'll do that one later. We'll start off with a proper would you rather, but just okay. heads up. Would you rather experience the Belko experiment with every Friday the 13th protagonist as your opponent or experience the purge with every famous killer in history, Ed Gein, Jeffrey Dahmer, etc.? And that's from Ivan Rivera. Oh, good question, Ivan. Um, okay, so let's let's talk this through. Belko experiment is you're in a building with all these other people, and you know, they they start with rules of kill this many people, but basically the end is you're gonna have to kill everyone else. You're gonna have to be the last person standing. Whereas the purge, you don't necessarily have to kill anyone, you just have to survive a single night. There is a, a finite time limit to it. Uh, it's a single, what, is it 12 hours maybe? I think I th- it thinks it's dust till dawn. Yeah, kind something of. like that. So you just have to survive for 12 hours. Interesting. So uh, for the for the killers, are they fictional too? or Because those examples were all real life killers. No, no, no. Right? It's, it's famous serial killers, like real people. Okay. I'm guessing Jack the Ripper's running around, whoever that was. Jack the Ripper was maybe <laughs> a woman. Probably not, but that's a theory. Uh, I'm trying to think you of who the, else. You mean Jack's the Ripper? The multiple people who were possible? It- yeah, that's yeah. also a theory that it was more than one person. Uh, okay. So. BTK's in- running around. <laughs> okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. The loser. Is if it's, if it's historical killers, that's not as scary to me. Because I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of those people... Uh, operated on the element of surprise, the mm-hmm. element of like their victims weren't expecting them to be killers. Right. If it were Jason and fucking Leatherface running around, that's a different story. Mm-hmm. So knowing that, because if it were the like horror movie villains, I might have to go Balco because it's with the Friday the Thirteenth protagonist. Protagonist. So not. So not Jason. Jason. We're talking the people who all yeah. live and have this insane drive to live. <laughs> so that's... Sure, yeah. But like, as far as Friday the 13th protagonist, I'm trying to think of ones that I'd be afraid of. The psychic one. Uh, oh, Tina. Ooh, psychic girl Tina for sure. Yeah. Uh, there's also Sergeant Brodsky from Jason X, notorious badass. Uh, Tommy Jarvis, he's cool, but I think I could take him. Uh, depending. I think I could take Jason Lives Tommy Jarvis, but, uh, New Beginning Tommy Jarvis is pretty fucking buff, so I don't know. Um, but that involves killing, and I don't want to kill. With the contingent, uh, with the, the condition that it's real-life serial killers, I'm gonna go with the purge. I think I can hide. I think I can hide. I think I can hide. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that one, too. Yeah? And my logic is that I'm not the type of a lot of these killers, so immediately... Are you not? John Wayne Gacy's not going after me. No, but wouldn't, like, uh, uh, Bundy? Ed Kemper, Bundy. So those are the ones I have to worry about. Mm-hmm. But people You're like... safe from Dahmer. <laughs> yeah, Dahmer's going to leave me alone. Yeah. Um, same with Ed Gein, probably. Although, mm, I'm probably fine. I don't know if I look enough like his mom, (laughs) Um, but yeah, people like Ed Kemper and Bundy, they, they would lure women into their cars. So I'm going to get into a car. The only one I'm worried about is Richard Ramirez because he, is that the night stalker? Yes. Okay. He's the one that gives me nightmares. I think he's the scariest because he would break into people's homes and he had no pattern for his victims. He kind of just chose at random and he I think that's the scariest thing is that's the one I'd have to worry about in my purge fortress. Richard Ramirez trying to get in and mm-hmm. kill me. But I think I'd rather take that chance than trying to fight a bunch of right. A bunch of <laughs> and people. And having to kill a bunch of people. Yeah. The purge I can hopefully hide out all night. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you also gotta think about like what comes after, you know? Yeah. How are you gonna feel having killed a bunch of people? Some of those Friday the Thirteenth protagonists are pretty cool, man. I don't want to kill wacky Crispin Glover. Yeah, I also think 
if BTK, because BTK would also break and enter. I could take him though. He's kind of a, he's such a loser. What a fucking (laughs) Fucking loser, loser, man. (laughs) Scoutmaster BTK. That was a good one. Who was that? Ivan? Ivan. Thanks, Ivan. Thank you, Ivan. That was a good one. Okay, ready for the next one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you rather be married to the leprechaun and listen to all of his (laughs) shitty jokes for the rest of your life or be married to Michael Myers, who says nothing to you for the rest of your life? And that's from Devin Hengisbach. Thank you, Devin. Oh, man. Um, Leprechaun's so fucking gross. Leprechaun is one of the most disgusting He's looking disgusting, beings yeah. in horror movies, which is saying a lot. I This one's hard because I have to really tell myself to separate Leprechaun from Warwick Davis. Oh, yeah. Oh, you gotta. Because Warwick is a wonderful man. Because I love him. Yeah. And watching those interviews with him where he talks about Leprechaun, I'm like, oh, I'm crushing on him so bad. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's so, so charming. He's great. So I have to separate that from Leprechaun because Leprechaun sucks. Leprechaun Leprechaun sucks. will get high with you, though. Yeah, but he's also like kind of rapey in a bunch of them. He is. He's always like tying women down and like licking their faces and shit. Um, Michael Myers... Uh, See this. The problem with this is I haven't retouched on the Halloween series. I know in a Leprechaun's long time. so recent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as I know, Michael Myers doesn't really have any uh, sexual predications or anything. I don't. Isn't thi- he watching his sister in the first one? That's like a, when he's a kid. I guess. It, I, I'm pretty sure adult Michael Myers never shows any real um, interest in in sex or anything like that. It's it's like Jason. Freddie will get okay. sexual, but I think Jason and Michael are just that smile. <laughs> <laughs> but I think uh, Michael and Jason are just just kind of killing machines. So I don't know. Is he gonna kill me? I don't think so. I think you're just he, in just, a stable relationship. Together. It's probably gonna be an asexual one because, like I said, with I Michael, don't, I think so. Leprechaun's gonna want it. He's he's a horny little fucker, and he's so gross. I'm know. gonna go with Michael, dude. I might go with Leprechaun. What? <laughs> Why? Tell me your reasoning. Because um, I feel like we could have fun movie nights and riff on movies together and get drunk and high. Because that's something that we do together. And I would miss that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. But he's going to want to get it in, man. I know. And he's fucking gross. He's it, When he goes to kiss you, his black teeth is like Ew. the black gums. That nasty makeup that Gabe Bartalos did did such an excellent job on. But he raps. All right, if you're if you're <laughs> content with that, yeah. All right. At least we both walk away happy from this question. We each get, you know, we're not fighting over. I anyone. was content. You're describing yourself as happy with Leprechaun. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Here. What do we got? Would you? <laughs> this one's so funny. Would you rather have your dad be a djinn and your mom be Pam Voorhees or have your dad be Candyman and your mom be your normal mom, but she's possessed by a demon? <laughs> <laughs> and that's from Alvaro Munoz. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Alvaro Mu- Munoz? Munoz or Munoz. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. So let me get this straight. Option A. Option A. Dad is a djinn, a like djinn. a wishmaster djinn. Like a, like a wishmaster djinn. Okay. And mom is Pamela Voorhees. Yeah. Option B. Dad is Candyman. Candy man. And mom your mom is, is normal, mom, but Cynthia possessed Denise. by a demon. So I'm, I, I think maybe to make this a clear image, I'm going to say your mom is possessed by Pazuzu from okay. The Exorcist. Okay. I don't like that. I don't like either of these. I don't like Pazuzu, Mom. Pazuzu's mean, I think. That's why I like Pazuzu, though. Yeah, but as a mom, you want to get rid of Claudia and get Pazuzu? Oh, my God. Pazuzu, Claudia would be hilarious, though. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to see Pazuzu, Cynthia. Oh, my God. I don't know. She might be able to fight it with her just... Oh my, overwhelming I, kindness. I was gonna say, and she's Catholic. <laughs> Ooh. So is my mom too. Wait, huh. is your mom Italian? She is Italian Catholic. She might be able to kick the. She might be able ass. to take the dude. She might be able to hold him in check. <laughs> <Yeah>. Uh 
<laughs> okay, so on that side of the, the equation, we have Candyman as a dad. Yeah. Is that cool? For me, it's confusing because yeah, I... you got some things. I have Candyman. such a crush on Candyman yeah. that I don't know if I would want him to be my dad. What? <laughs> I forget what... Uh, like, can I be cool with Candyman? What makes him mad? I mean, I think just saying racism? his name. Oh, just... Well, racism probably makes him pretty mad. Yeah. That's why he got murdered. Yeah. Well, I'm not racist. There's probably going to be a lot of bees. Oh, Oh my God. But no, you could have... Like a honey farm? Yeah, you could have a beekeeping operation. (laughs) And that could be like father-son bonding time. That'd be cool. And you could sell artisanal honey. And then we always need more bees. He's like an infinite supply of bees. Oh. This is just getting into like the pros of Candyman in general, not him as a dad. (laughs) But he could just... You know, yeah. Supply bees. Okay, so we got bees on that side. The other side, dad is gin. Dad, your dad's a gin. Gin never really gives you what you want, though. No. Which I guess is like a lot of dads. Sure. You <laughs> ask them for something, and they're like, "All right," but yeah. then they twist it, and you're like, "Damn it, dad!" Gin's primed to be a dad, actually. Yeah, he's like dad humor and dad logic taken to its worst possible conclusion you know yeah yeah and then your mom, mom is pamela voorhees. pamela voorhees she loves her kid i was gonna say she would die for you yeah she, she would kill you for you get bullied you. at school yeah she'll take care of that real quick mm-hmm. um she seems warm yeah sure if she if she if she likes you she probably gave jason a lot of hugs mm-hmm. that's nice mm-hmm. this is a tough one dude I mean, if so, like if you're if you're her kid, mm-hmm. you know that whoever, like if she leaves you with a babysitter, or leaves you at camp, you know that you're gonna be taken care of because they know what happens if they let her kid drown. Yeah, now they do. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but is it ever embarrassing? Is it ever like, mom? Oh man, you she went and she that. would be the one who, if she drove you to school and you asked her to not drop you off right in front. You know, like maybe down the street, she would freak out. Yeah. She would be mortally offended. Yeah. And you got to watch what you say about like when you're talking about your friends. Because like, Mm. you know, you always complain. Sometimes your friends do stupid shit. And you're like, yeah, Eric's being a real dick today. And then Eric's dead. Yeah. It's like, no, man. He just wouldn't trade me his lunch. I didn't mean to kill him. Yeah. Now whose house am I going to go play Sega at? Mm -hmm. As I date myself. Yeah. Um... Ah man, I might have to go. Do you have a? Are are you leaning? I somewhere? think I, yeah. I what am. do you got? I'm gonna go with Candyman and my mom possessed by Pazuzu. I'm gonna say the same. Yeah, that seems like a bit more manageable to me. I think I could. I think I could chill with Candyman. Yeah. More so than the and Candyman at least was a person. Yeah. So he can relate to people and people problems. Mm-hmm. A gin is just gonna be like. Like, he went off on uh, someone in the first Wishmaster movie talking about how their mortal concerns are nothing to him. Oh, yeah. You you're... know? He's not going to listen to your problems. Yeah. He's going to be one of those real tough dads who's like, oh, oh, th- th- you you failed your test? Well, try fucking failing an empire when the King Solomon asks you to do something. And you're like, fuck, dad. Yeah. Please, I'm trying to have a conversation. Yeah. He's talking about how music was better back in his day but it was like flutes yeah and drums and that's it (laughs) (laughs) they didn't have string instruments yet yeah and then pamela might be a little bit overzealous and i think my mom could keep pazuzu in check okay that's the thing is this doesn't say you can't exercise the demon that's right so yeah okay so we both are thinking that one yeah okay cool that's good that's a good one thank you alvaro alvaro thank you I'm going to do the one. I'm going to give you the one that is not necessarily would you rather, but I think is kind of a fun little scenario we could talk about for a little bit. Okay. It's good. It's raining and you see a paper boat racing down the street towards a drain leading to the sewer. There's a red balloon floating by the drain. You also notice a dollar bill in the boat as it goes toward the drain. Do you try to retrieve it? What dollar amount would the bill need to be for you to try and grab it? Wait, can it be any amount of dollars? That's if- that's I I think I, I I changed my reading of it a little bit because this was the dollar bill goes into the drain. 
do you try and go for it? Which I don't think, no, you don't. No. Because, you know, Pennywise is right there. But if you think you could grab it on yeah, time yeah, before yeah, yeah. it falls in there, how much money would need to be in that boat for you to try and go for it? Hmm. Here's the thing. Georgie has this conversation with Pennywise. Do you think Georgie could have just been like, just got up and left? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because so I, that happens a few, I think in the, oh, I'm trying to think back to the book. Are, yeah. Are there it's, any like failed captures for of sure. people? Yeah. There's a, there's um a scene where it's uh Bill and Richie confront Pennywise in the Neapold house and they, they run away. They're able to escape. Oh. So it's possible. Yeah. So Georgie could have gotten up yeah, and I'm left. Not, I'm not a stupid little kid like Georgie. I'm not going to sit there and fucking reach in. Uh, I'll go for it if it's like, I don't know, a grand. Yeah? Yeah. Because like, if even if, yeah, if it goes into the drain and I miss it, I'll just get up and walk away. I feel like, yeah, I was going to say even less. If I think I can <laughs> grab it. You do it's for like a 500 spot. bucks. Yeah, right. <laughs> 500 bucks. That's a ton of money. I would go to for just it. pick up off the street. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm sticking with a thousand. Would you rather live in a house where a demon scares the shit out of you once a month or <laughs> a house where a ghost lives there like a bad roommate, like the Flying Dutchman and SpongeBob? I don't know if you remember those episodes or not. Oh, man. I kind of I I like remember. vaguely do. There yeah, wasn't yeah. a name included with this one. I don't want to like give their email address out oh, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh thank you whoever you are man those scares would like you'd be thinking about them especially because do you know when they're coming i is, was just thinking that is it is, is it, it a, a scheduled, scheduled scare i'm gonna say no because then it's not very scary if you know yeah you can just kind of prep yourself for it yeah so it's a random scare once a month once a month that sucks that sucks to live with. Yeah. Hanging over your head. What's the roommate ghost like? He's just there all the time. He's a bad roommate. So he's just a bad roommate. He's a bad roommate, but he's a ghost and he's there forever. Uh, I mean, uh, th- like, really think about this because imagine our apartment. So we live together. Yeah. But in- just imagine insane. there's a third person here and they suck and they're a ghost. <laughs> And they're here all the time. And we were from home. So he's here all the time. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, why? what are you saying? Are you saying the scary one? No, no, no. I'm saying the ghost. I don't want to get scared all yeah, the time. You... But I'm just saying you, you, you know, I wanted to make it fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm mostly okay with getting scared. You know, for me, it's like a little thrill. Mm-hmm. I might go with the scary ghost. Okay scary is it a poltergeist can it affect it says physical it's a ob- demon oh so that's really scary <laughs> yeah that's scarier than a ghost yeah that it. sounds way more malicious mm-hmm. malevolent either either of works work. yeah Maybe malevolent um i still might take my chances with them because i don't know this fucking this asshole ghost roommate's probably gonna be leaving dishes in the sink and shit I don't want that. All right. I'll go with the demon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll just have my mom come over and temp- yeah, temper it. it. <laughs> this one is funny because it's so <laughs> industry, which oh, I gosh. thought was such a different take on these. And by that, you mean film industry? Yes. Because we live in Los Angeles and all of our Sorry, friends and associates have to do industry. with the film industry. So we just call it the industry yeah. because we're insufferable like that. <laughs> Would you rather work as crew on the set of The Shining oh, or God. on the set of Maximum Overdrive? Oh, <laughs> and fucking from, Maximum and Overdrive. Matt Butler. Matt Butler said that. Matt Butler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, longtime practical folks you, fan. You said for sure Maximum for Overdrive. For sure. But James, think about it. There's a risk you lose an eyeball. <laughs> That's true. I don't think Stanley Kubrick injured anyone <laughs> On the shiny, physically, I think he emotionally fucked ruined up Shelley people. Duvall for a, a healthy amount of time. Yeah. And Stanley Kubrick infamously does hundreds of takes of everything. Yeah, Stephen King probably 
is not so to stringent. Get takes of some he things. probably forgot to get a lot of coverage. Since this is coming out before the Maximum Overdrive yeah, yeah, yeah. episode, we will just briefly explain that yes, the director of photography on Maximum Overdrive lost an he eye. He lost an eye due to Stephen King and the set in general not being uh, stringent enough about their safety. Yep. And uh, they were filming. I think it was the part with the lawnmower, and the lawnmower, lawnmower ran over something. And this guy lost his, his eye. Splinters dude. went to that guy's eye. Yeah. And there were. I think there were some other crazy. I think there were. Yeah, yeah. That was just. We talked. We're gonna talk about example. it more in that episode. Yeah. So but you'll stay tuned for that. So that's a, that was a dangerous set to be on. Your director's <sighs> on a lot of cocaine. He's, he's on so much cocaine. Stephen King. Yeah, you're like '80s coked out Stephen King. But that's the thing, though, is. That might be fun. It might, it probably Kubrick really fun. is not going to be fun. No. Kubrick is going to be this real... Uh, so yeah, Stanley Kubrick, legendary filmmaker. Oh wait, The Shining is one of Just my his filmography movies. in general. He might have the highest like hit, like success Does ratio. Does he have any like misses? I've never seen Barry Lyndon, but I'm sure it's good. It's gorgeous. Uh, I don't know, dude. He's got a lot of really fucking great movies that like define movies. Yeah, AI, I don't count. No, but he's got like 2001, Clockwork Orange, Full Metal Jacket, mm-hmm. which is all these movies that define cinema. But he got that. He made those movies by being an asshole, an insane director. Yeah. Now, I don't think he ever, uh, you know, in, in, in the context of like Me Too and everything, I don't think he was ever accused of like sexual Not harassment. that I know. I'm not going to say either way. Sure. We have no I've idea. I've never heard of that. Uh, but, but as far as like emotional uh, abuse kind of. Yeah. Yeah. He was a crazy perfectionist. Because that, that, yeah. He, like you said, hundreds of takes sometimes. Yeah. Which is insane. A couple years ago, we went to, was it LACMA that had the exhibit about yeah, him? The there was a giant here in LA. Yeah, Stanley Kubrick exhibit. And so they had a ton of his notes and like just a glimpse into what being behind the scenes on a Kubrick movie would have been like is nuts. I mean, I, I keep thinking of Shelley Duvall because he just Same. wrecked her. Uh, yeah. That performance that she gives in The Shining is a result of her being actually like terrified and just super stressed out from uh, Kubrick. I, I believe he told the crew to not be nice to her. That's right. She was totally isolated. On, yeah. So that, on that sucks. Uh, also, like he made someone type out all those all work and no oh my play God. you know that's that's a job that you might have to do so that sounds like a real pain in the ass yeah i mean and it's the shining specifically yes i don't remember what filming conditions were like with the hotel no were idea they, uh... i think a lot of it was sets oh okay so I we're not talking actually isolated in mountains and shit i don't believe so filming. i think some of it okay but i remember in that documentary about it a lot of those rooms and stuff are impossible. So I think a lot of it is sets. I could be wrong. Man, maximum overdrive. You're probably doing drugs. You're probably getting laid. Honestly, yeah. You're... Crafty is just Coke and yeah. Schlitz. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a really fun time. You know what? You ACDC to might come some... to set. ACDC might. Probably not. I they don't know might... if they care enough. But they that's might fun. Visit. Yeah. I'm definitely going to stick gonna with that I'm going to pick that one, too. Overdrive. I could never be paid to be mean to Shelly Duvall. <laughs> right. She's an angel. No, that's... Mm-mm. Okay. All right. I like that one. That's Thank a you, great Matt. question. That was a lot of fun. Okay. Very industry. <laughs> Here's a very, very good one. If you came into the custody of a child that you learned was the Antichrist, would you rather nurture it, raise it as your own child, etc., and gain untold levels of fame and success, but damn the world to a future of corruption and malfeasance, a la Rosemary's baby, mm-hmm. or kill it, saving the world from a dire fate, but then having to live with the knowledge of your horrible deed and essentially being pestered by the devil for the rest of your life, a la the Omen. Is it a horrible deed that you killed a baby devil? I'm sure, and that was from Christian Glossner, Thanks, Christian. by the way. Oh, ironically. I think... Even though, you know, logistically you could remove yourself from that situation and think, I, I did a good thing. I think having done it, that would sit with you. Sure. That's a hard one to be. I'm such a boring, straight level, 
moral person. I'm killing that kid. Yeah. I don't want to condemn the world to Satan rule. <laughs> I would totally raise the Antichrist. Oh, no. We'd have so much fun. Chelsea, now we're going to have an issue if we ever have kids and one of them's the Antichrist. Oh. That's going to be a real impasse for us. But <laughs> I just feel like that'd be fun. Shh. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> that ending of Rosemary's Baby always makes me so uncomfortable. Mm, yeah, I, yeah. Like thinking realist, like my image of who the devil is, which is like a fun guy. Yeah, you're fun thinking part. Black Phillip. I know, I'm thinking you Black You want to hang Phillip. out with Black Phillip. He's on my <laughs> desk right now. I have a little plushie. I know, I'm thinking of Black Phillip or like Satan from South Park. <laughs> like really oh, fun Satan. If, oh, if it's that Satan, we're hanging out then. Yeah. And we're singing up there. Yeah. Yeah. Realistically, I'd probably kill the Antichrist. Yeah. And then what was it? Like the devil's going to be pestering you? Yeah. The devil. Because you, you killed his kid and the devil's after you. Yeah. I'll just bring Cynthia and have her take No, my God. Cynthia can't save you from all of these would you rather. <laughs> yeah, she can. She's my mom. <laughs> I'm going to do a couple more would you rathers that people submitted and then we're going to do some that I submitted okay. to myself. <laughs> would you rather morally justify the facility in Cabin in the Woods or work for the defense of Wayland yutani in their inevitable trial for their crimes against humanity? And that's from Ian Bissinger. Thanks, Ian. The I love one, this one. The it, one would you rather I came up with involves Wayland yutani Really? Yeah. I, Spoilers, I read this one aloud to you like a week ago because I, I thought it was it must so have funny. nestled in my brain, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Okay, so it's justify the cabin in the woods facility. Yeah, I was, I'm, I'm going to say you're in the same position for both. Maybe okay. you're their you're like a lawyer. You're their lawyer, okay. exactly. Dude, cabin in the woods. Yeah. Yeah, because their end goal is preservation of the earth. And uh, preventing the destruction of all but through such, humankind. Through what means, James? Through whatever means, I guess. The slaughter of innocents. You're drugging them and changing their personality. But if you don't do that, there's no innocence at all. All oh, the James. innocents are dead. I'm honestly worried right now about going down like a very philosophical. This is like the train. It's like the the train track. The trolley problem. problem? Yes. You know, which we're seeing played out with uh, self-driving cars, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, yeah, because if you don't do that, that's it. But so, for people who aren't as familiar with like, Wayland Utani, it's from Alien. Yeah. What? The Alien what franchise. is their case? Why are they going to court? What's their trial? So Wayland Utani is a big-time corporation, uh, like just a huge mega corporation on the level of like governments of nations because it's the future and because of course capitalism so like Wayland yutani is like yeah the end result of capitalism late stage capitalism is late, that yeah late accurate? stage cap for sure okay or like yeah so thank google but then take google to like its worst possible yeah iteration where like they're not uh restrained by any nation's laws they operate as their own kind of state Mm -hmm. uh Wayland yutani is basically in that position and what they've been doing as we've seen since the first alien movie is sending people out to acquire the xenomorph to research it for weapons capabilities and uh during that process anyone who happens to die during the acquisition of the xenomorphs that's fine a crew crew expendable is what the message says. So in the first one, that's just a bunch of uh, like blue collar space workers. In the second one, the the Marines who go to like take care of the Xenomorph problem, they are in turn backstabbed by that motherfucker Burke. Oh fuck that guy! That guy was such an I, asshole. I think the thing that makes Whale and Dutani so despicable is that they are so um, cagey about what's actually going to happen to people. Super shadowy. They're, yeah. They are, yeah. They kind of give their crews one thing and then other people on the crew have secret motives. Yeah, they mislead people. The company very much pulls strings so that people are working against each other in order to fulfill the good of the company. Yeah. and But, like, it's for profits and it's for profits uh, acquired via, like, weapons and stuff. Like yes. They want to make super weapons from xenomorph genes 
that will in turn be used to cause more death and destruction. So, uh, also fun fact in alien resurrection, which is a garbage fucking movie that ruins pretty much everything that's good about the alien series. Is that the fourth one? That is the fourth one. Yeah. Uh, you know, the one that ruins Ripley, there is a deleted <sighs> scene. So I'm not sure how uh, canonical it is, but I believe they say that Wayland Yutani, cause it takes place hundreds of years after the, the other ones. I believe they say Will and Yutani was bought by Walmart. No way. They fucking, yeah, that movie sucks, dude. Cabin in the Woods, though, like I said, that facility is just trying to stop the destruction of the Earth. And we see what happens in the end when they don't succeed. Mm-hmm. The fucking Earth gets destroyed. There's nothing left to defend. Easy case for me, Cabin in the Woods. I think I would go with that, too. I think that's easier to defend in court. Also... Wayland Utani, I'm trying to think of who okay, who do you have representing Wayland Utani that you can have come and sit in front of a jury? That Burke dude who nobody oh, likes. Yeah. Immediately. No one's likable, huh? You know who you got in Cabin in the Woods? Bradley you, Whitford. Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins. You yeah. put them up on the stand, <laughs> you're fucking sailing clear, dude. Yeah. They're so great. I forgot that's Richard Jenkins. That's Richard Man, Jenkins. They're so likable. It's 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 wonderful. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Okay. for sure, Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. So we actually got a submission through our P.O. box, which I thought was kind of weird. It's actually right here. I have it on this disc, which if you're watching this on video, says play me. So (laughs) What could this be? I don't know. I'm going to pop this into the the computer at a very awkward angle. Hello, James. Do you want to play a game? I'm a big fan of your YouTube channel. So I'm letting you choose which of my traps you're going to escape from. Trap number one is the reverse bear trap, where there's a giant metal thing on your head that'll rip your skull apart if you don't get the key, which is inside the stomach of a very alive person. Trap number two is the Venus fly trap, where there's another giant metal thing on your head but you don't have to kill someone, but you do have to dig out a key that's behind your eyeball. Choose carefully. P.S. When are you going to do a saw kill count? No! Oh, Jigsaw, that's rude. That's really rude, Jigsaw. No, Jigsaw. Be happy with the kill counts I'm giving you. We're doing Leprechaun right now. Looks like Jigsaw upgraded his tag. He's got DVDs now. Yeah. I hear he has DVDs because he couldn't find a VHS tape at Best Buy. Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah. <laughs> because Best Buy probably hasn't sold VHS tapes in yeah. 15 years. And probably the employees gave them a really weird look when they asked for VHS tapes and then asked for cassettes because they didn't have VHS tapes. And then the Best Buy employee probably used the term vintage to destroy those technologies. Which they were not wrong about. <sighs> okay. Well, thanks for the submission, Jigsaw. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big fan. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Although he didn't read the, the fact. No. He's too entitled for that. <laughs> <laughs> Jigsaw would not read the frequently asked questions on any website anywhere. <laughs> you create a channel ostensibly for other people, but tell them they can't make requests. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so this is a tough question oh, yeah, so if you could understand what the fuck jigsaw was saying uh he jigsaw he, no it, it is jigsaw james i'm sorry he sounded just like he him. wants james to pick between the reverse bear trap from the first movie which is basically imagine like a bear trap where it's between your teeth and when it opens it just rips your head open that sucks or oh and the key to unlock yourself from it is in the stomach of a person who is in the cell with you and they're alive you have to kill someone to get out of this trap Mm -hmm. then there's the venus fly trap which is like a clamp that is on either side of your head and so if you don't get the key to it in time it snaps shut and just like impales your skull but the key to get it is behind your eye yeah yeah couple things sure okay uh, when Amanda was told, Amanda's the one who was in the reverse bear trap in the first one. Correct. When he first explains the rules to he her. He says it, the person's dead. Yeah. But just to make this more interesting, I mentioned the fact that that person is alive. Yeah. Which I think makes this a harder choice. Way harder. Because if, if 
I had gotten the rules that she got, easy. I would have torn into it right easy, away. Easy, easy, easy. She does see that he's alive before she tears into him, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't have waited that long. It would have already been torn open. Okay, be- but, but I'm that's saying not, yeah, that's not, not yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, I don't know, but I think she knows the person. I think it's her like It's her drug, drug dealer. dealer. Okay. I think it's her drug dealer because by killing him, she cuts off her sure. supply. Sure. Therefore, so. rehabilitating herself. Perfect rehabilitation. It Trump. works every time. <laughs> except when they <laughs> murder so themselves. I don't an murder asshole. anyone. I don't, I didn't take, I technically, I Technically, didn't. have you heard of Charles Manson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard what fucking happened to him, Jake Saw. He died in jail. Um. So do I know this person who has the key in their stomach? I'm going to say no. Okay. But you're still killing someone. That's the thing. It's brutal too. So here's my other thing is with the key behind the eye trick in the movie it looks like his eye is still functioning. That kind of drove me nuts about I'm that. I'm super skeptical of the idea that Jigsaw or any of his various accomplices that pop up throughout that fucking convoluted series has the medical capabilities of removing an eye, putting a key back there, and replacing the eye in a manner in which the eye still functions just fine. That seems impossible to me. With that in mind, realistically, I don't think that eye is working. If they fucking took the eye out and put the key there and put it back, I don't think that, I think that eye is already fucked up. Yeah. So it's still going to be painful. Yeah. And I'm assuming that it's still mostly connected. I'm yeah. I'm guessing he like just kind of pushed it back in there. Like popped it out. Yeah. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's easier to pop an eye out and pop back in than I'm imagining. Blech. With it still working. Yeah. Definitely skeevy. But the other thing is it's one eye. No more 3D movies. No. <laughs> but they suck anyway. They do. <laughs> I never go see them. Yeah. Last good one was Gravity. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I don't want to kill someone, so I'll do the eye. It sucks. It's gonna be real painful. But you Even still got that guy couldn't do it. What in the movie that guy couldn't do it? Cause think about that. Yeah, the actual doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. It's probably it's probably easier to kill the person because yeah. it's not doing harm to yourself, which like humans have just like a yeah innate biological it's uh, self-preservation yeah yeah you, you don't want to do that but i think i'll go with the eye because i still got the one eye i can wear a fucking eye patch and be a cool that's what i was cool thinking. eye patch put out an eye patch yeah i think i might go with that one too because i'm thinking my life after assuming i could survive both mm-hmm. my life after i'm living a better life with one eye versus both eyes but i totally killed a person the memory of stabbing out your own eye isn't going to keep you up at night it mu- oh, yeah, but not as much as killing yeah. someone. Yeah, yeah. One of the the eye thing is, I think, a more of a physical pain that'll heal relatively quickly. Murdering someone, that nah. Yeah, that's gonna. And then you can write a book. Yeah. About how you survived the jigsaw killer. That'd be fun. Okay. Good question. We're in agreement then. I'm gonna give you some that I wrote. Let me give you my one, even though I feel okay. like. It- would you rather be an unpaid intern for Jigsaw or a uh, like uh, top level person for Waylon Yutani? Does top level person imply I'm on the spaceship, or is that just no, at the corporation? No, you're sending people on the spaceship. Oh, Waylon. Oh yeah. Yeah, easy. Because <laughs> right? either as way, I, said, I was like, Wait either way, you're being responsible terrible. for deaths. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think yeah. that I guess the one argument is uh, with Jigsaw, you can maybe argue that. You were being forced to do it. I don't know. I got mm. nothing. I'm bad at these. Oh, James, you <laughs> I'm tried. good at working them out. I'm bad with coming up with scenarios. <laughs> okay, here's mine. Okay. <laughs> Which of these would you rather have permanently adhered to your body? Jason's hockey mask or Freddy's glove? Permanently. Forever. It's got to be the glove, right? Think of so. There's so many things you can't do. But how can you eat with the hockey mask? <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to have like soylent through straws and that's, that's it. true. If it's like stuck to your face, yeah. you could put straws in like the little, you got the holes. little holes. Yeah. 
I think it's got to be the glove. Damn it. Okay. That was actually, that was not my best one. I gave you the worst one first. Okay. 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 Here we go. There's been a murder. You were a witness. Unfortunately, the police think you did it. Who would you rather have been the culprit? Christine or Leprechaun? Keep in mind that you have to convince the police that this person or thing committed this crime. The stakes here are life in prison. That's a, this is a good one. <laughs> right? So think you have to make the police or a jury or whoever believe yeah. that one of these things did this. So I haven't seen Christine in a while, like a long time. Yeah. So I can't remember like the finer details of the whole situation. Like I understand it's a killer car. I imagine Christine might be more stealthy and might play her cards closer to her uh, to her chest, cause to her grill. I don't know. Bumper, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I imagine that she would not be easy to to prove. Leprechaun, as we have seen, just runs all the fuck around. He has no problem strolling into a casino and playing craps. He has no problem walking through the hood or performing rap songs in crowded venues. I think it'd be easier to get the leprechaun in front of, like, in plain sight of the police and be like, look at this disgusting, nasty, but gross motherfucker. That's the thing with him, though, is he can just disappear and shit. So good luck getting him in front of the police. Get his gold. He'll show up. Yeah. I guess you'd have to finagle that somehow. Yeah. Because my other thing with this one is a car is a real thing. A leprechaun's not. That's true. At least as far as the world is concerned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until you have to convince the cops that leprechauns are real. Man, isn't that first movie just so fucking weird that it's a leprechaun just running around on like a farm? Isn't that so It's so crazy? weird, yeah. It's so, like, what the... That's weird, man. Uh, I I feel like Leprechaun's easy to, to drive out, dude, to to be like, just get him out there. Honestly, all you gotta do is, like, put out some Irish whiskey, and he'll mm-hmm. come steal it and drink it. He's, yeah, I think there's ways you could you could get him to show up and be like, no, this guy did it. I don't think... I, I don't remember what Christine's, like, motivations are, but I don't know if you can, like trick her or offer her things in a way that'll like convince her to show herself as a killer car. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And especially with Christine, because it's a real thing, even if she starts playing like songs that are like, I don't know, you're going to burn in hell or yeah, whatever. Like Bumblebee and Transformers. Yeah. And they can just play it <laughs> off as like, well, it's just, it's the radio, dude. You sound crazy. You might look crazier. But as soon as you show that nasty fucking leppy boy, mm-hmm. he's so gross. I think it's it's case closed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I might agree with you. On Good one. one. Good one, though. All right, James. This is my <laughs> this is my last one. Okay. I thought of this so late at night. This is a very late night <laughs> weird. Would you rather? I hope you were laying in bed and grabbed your phone and jotted it down right as he fell asleep. I think it was it was like right before I went to bed. Okay. So I was a little tired. Pick one of these as a theme for our wedding. Oh, God. Critters <laughs> or the Psycho remake. What the fuck? What? Keep in mind that while the Psycho remake may be more aesthetically pleasing than Critters, you will have to spend most of our reception explaining to guests that the theme isn't Psycho, it's the remake of Psycho, and then explaining that there was indeed a remake of Psycho. The Critters theme would entail our bridal party being dressed as Critters, and then we'd get married in a barn as an homage to the first film. (laughs) Hon. (laughs) It's hard. (laughs) What does a Psycho remake theme wedding look like? That's what I said is is it would look exactly like a psycho themed wedding. What's a psycho themed wedding look like? I don't know. You could get married at a at a motel and it could be you could have black and white decorations or something. You know, like you can could, the can it the, could be fifties style, everyone's dressed. So it would look really nice. Can the officiator 
actually be a corpse that spins around in a chair. Oh, that'd be so good. Yeah. I was thinking for the Psycho remake themed wedding, Vince Vaughn would officiate. Oh, that's true too, because Vince Vaughn. But plays see, that's the, that's Bates. the catch with the Psycho remake wedding is you can make it look amazing. It can be all fifties and vintage, and you could get married at a motel and have it all themed. But then you have to explain to everyone that it's the psycho. It's the remake of Psycho. You know what's uh, you know what's actually making me pause more with that one is Vince Vaughn's officiating. He's gonna make me look real short. That dude's got like six inches is on he me. Really he's like six tall? four or something. He's at least six oh, three. Shit. He's a tall man. He's a very tall man. I don't want that in my wedding pictures, man. With a tall ass Vince Vaughn standing you know there who in between us. I think is about your height. Is Leonardo DiCaprio? Oh, he is, and yeah. he is in Critters Four, Three, Three. I think. Shit, I don't know. I've he's in one of the, the Critters one. movies. Yeah, I've seen the one with him in it. I watched yeah. it in high school. Because <laughs> I think it's like I think it's like farm, town, city, space. I think he's in the third one. Yeah, the then. city. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, sure, we can have Leo, but then he's just gonna hit on all the the bridesmaids and everything. Oh man, you know that's gonna he's be gonna try to get with your sister. Oh, that's <laughs> exhausting. It's like, Leo, we know you're a really good actor, dude. Just, yeah. You got your Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, all the decorations and stuff would have to be so gross because it's critters. Yeah, they're nasty. Like a bouquet of balls. critters. Oh, can one of them be the ring bearer rolling down? Oh, the... my God. That'd be so cool. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking critters, dude. Critters? Maybe. <sighs> I might have to go with that. Too. I just, the idea of, because realistically, the idea of expending the energy it would take to get everyone to understand <laughs> that our theme is the remake of Psycho. I love that that's your hang up, is like having it's to It's exhausting. Yeah, because that's every person and who that, enters. And that's all anyone's thinking about. Yeah. Is wondering, since when did we get so into that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also they're sitting there like, why not just make it a regular psycho? Exactly. Theme? Like, <laughs> yeah. And isn't the one thing I don't I don't think I've ever seen this remake. I haven't but isn't either. it a shot for shot it's remake shot for except shot. for a scene where they add he's masturbating while looking through uh That the sounds people. correct. I believe that happens. So that would probably have to get oh, incorporated no. somewhere too into the <laughs> wedding. Just to really signify that it's the remake. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going with critters. Okay. I'll go with Critters as well. Cool. So we can be in agreement All right. on the theme for our wedding. It's I uh, guess Critters it is. <laughs> we can have the guy from the the first couple officiate, the one alien who's like a Broadway actor. The sh- he shapeshifts. Oh, I have seen the second one because it's the Easter one. Yeah. And the th- other alien shapeshifts into the Playboy model. Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah super gratuitous. Oh, with a staple in the chest. That's kind of funny. Oh, yeah. Because it's Cause like it from a... The centerfold. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's kind of funny. Yeah. But that uh, guy's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The alien dude, he is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. I'm going to cool. do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think that's about, that's all I've got all right. for you. Did you have fun? <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I especially I wanna... liked uh, the Jigsaw DVD. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I want to do another one of these at some point, but maybe this episode now that people have more of an idea of what I'm looking for. Yeah. You know, get creative with these. Get yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You saw what we like. Mm-hmm. Do that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, this podcast comes out every Tuesday. You can find it on your favorite podcasting app. And now also in video form on our channel. Was Dead that Meat. an air horn? Uh, no, it wasn't. I don't know what it, it was. It was a weird thing. Yeah. It was a weird thing. <laughs> uh, on Dead Meat on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You can also find... Oh, also d- do the rating and reviewing thing. Yes. Review and uh, rate the podcast, especially on iTunes. Go give us good ratings, man. It matters. Helps a lot. Yeah. In fact, a a lot of our recent developments came from ranking relatively highly on the new podcast list. So like... You're, you're the, the two minutes you spend to give us a little rating and write a review. It helps so much. It affects our lives. Yeah. So it it'd literally be awesome if you did that. does. Yeah. Um, so if you enjoyed this, please consider giving back in that way. You can also find Dead Meat on social media at Dead Meat James on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find my personal stuff at James A. Janice on Twitter and Instagram. It's much more political. Avoid that if you don't want to deal with that. Chelsea. Where can people find you? You can find me at Carebeck, that's C-R-E-B-E-C-C, on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want 
this final girl shirt or other things like That's it, right. we got deadmeatstore.com. Deadmeatstore.com. We got we got the dead meat shirt that I'm repping. We got the final girl shirt there. We yeah. got pins. We got a new pin coming in, Dol Machete. Yes, Dol Machete pins. To I'm match excited. our golden chainsaw pin. All of your t shirts probably come with Lucy hair all over them. Oh, for sure. I try to make sure that doesn't happen, but she likes to she climb into the, the pile of shirts when I'm sorting them. So she does. You know, if you want a little souvenir. Yeah. Me, Lucy and you know buying the merch helps so that I'm able to spend more time doing really in-depth episodes like I'm working on an episode now about torture yeah because people wanted it and it has been very fun to do Wait, research people, for people wanted to hear about Saw yeah oh that's surprising right oh I wish people had told me you know <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna be talking about Saw in that episode yeah you'll get your fucking Saw fix yes yes <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Anything else? I don't think so. I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you and for thank listening. You for listening. And yeah. Yeah. It's so much fun to do these. So find us next Tuesday with and Maximum Overdrive. Oh, yeah. Maximum Overdrive. Again, just a reminder no video for that. Yes. But it'll be some sweet, sweet audio. But after that, everything will have video. That's right. That's an exception. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.